Orange Conference 2022. What's good? Hey, I ain't know some of y'all could wobble like that, though. Some of y'all got a little lower than the Christian minimum, though, okay? You, that ain't no praise dance, okay? You learn that from somewhere else, that's okay. Because uh, one thing is guaranteed in life. Every single one of us is going to encounter humans that are one thing and one thing for sure. It's that they are all complicated. What are we supposed to do as leaders when we got all these complicated people in our world making everything complicated? If only there was a website we could go to, perfectpeople.com, and we could ask them to work for us and volunteer for us. We could marry them and date them and work with them. The only problem is we wouldn't be on the website. <laughs> because what I know about you and what I know about me is we are complicated. And it's easy to live with this mantra. This mantra is, well, if they would just if, if, if they would just get their act together, if my senior leader would just, if the government would just, if volunteers would just, and you can just have this mantra that thinks the world would be a better place if everybody else just changed. But that's just not how leaders think. Leaders walk in a room and they think, man, this organization would be better if I, Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You want to know what the common denominator is of every complicated human I have ever had tension with is me. If everyone else in the organization is the problem in your mind, I just have to tell you, that's bad math. <laughs> do the math, bro. Do the math. What's the common denominator? What, so what do we do? What do we do? I think we do what, what Colossians 3 tells us to do. It, it, te it says this. It says, tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find fault with someone, release this same gift of forgiveness to them. What should you do? Well, you should tolerate their weaknesses. Because here's, here's what I know what happens with this. Whenever we read Colossians 3.13, we think of somebody else that we are enduring. We think of somebody else that we are tolerating. But here's what I know to be true about every single leader. Every single leader has somebody that is tolerating them. There is something in you that someone's just going, all right, all right, let me just give them a pass. So, yeah, I think with all of the complicated people that you and I have, guess what? We don't have any other options. So we might as well just say, hey, how about I make a little bit of space for you and you should just make a little bit of space for me because what's true for us is well human leaders they they have to make space for human complications because that's what we're all that's what we're all stuck with i love talking to senior leaders when they talk about people who used to work at their church they told the church that uh, god was sending them into their next season of ministry i said no you sent them into their next season of ministry <laughs> We get real creative on transition announcements, okay? I'm like, okay, I digress. What do I know? And I say, hey, how's, how, how are they doing? Have you checked in with that family? And this is what one guy said to me the other day, and I couldn't believe he said it. He said, they're dead to me. I said, they died? <laughs> what did they do to deserve the emotional death you gave them? They talked about you to other church members? Did they steal your car too? Like... What, what caused the funeral? It sounds like you, you canceled them, man. I thought you weren't about the cancel culture, but, we, but we, we live in it, and cancel culture gives us some interesting math. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and here's the math that it gives us is, well, if they hurt me, that means I can cancel them. But here's what's interesting. When we hurt them, our thought is, well, give me a break. Uh, you didn't know what was going on in my life. I had COVID. I was pregnant. My kids started smoking weed. We had budget cuts. Our church doors were about to close. And so what we want is we want amazing grace for our complicated behind the scenes, yet we want to give an emotional funeral for somebody else's behavior. And it's just not fair. So what we should do is give them the same grace that we wish someone was giving us if they only knew what was really going on with us. So how do human leaders make space for human complications? Number one, use this phrase very often. I could be wrong. 
I could be wrong. This is all about intellectual humility. Intellectual humility is this idea that I could be wrong. Not that I am, but that I could be. Because the more experience you have, the more education that you have, the less space you make for somebody else's perspective. Do you know how many theological, medical, and political conversations could have been salvaged if one party or another simply used the phrase, hey, uh, I could be wrong. How many youth pastors became medical experts over the last two years? We're like, hey, bruh, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. <laughs> Talking about somebody got a brother in the medical field. We all know somebody in the medical field, bruh, okay? But what would it look like if we just said, hey, you know what? I want to make some space for your complications. If you make some space for mine, I, I, I could. I could be wrong. And sometimes we grow weary being the only one who does that. Sometimes we grow weary of being the only leader that takes the high road. But I want to encourage somebody today, keep taking the high road. And, and I know in the short term, it feels like I'm growing weary being the only one. But what do we appreciate the most? The people who have been consistent in the long run. The, the people that have consistently shown up, the people that consistently kept taking the high road, the people that consistently kept, kept calling. And sometimes you grow weary in the short term of being the thing you appreciate the most in the long. And so I just want to encourage a leader today to do this. Keep being the type of leader in the short term that you appreciate the most in the long run. And the second thing that you can do to make space for human complications is foster curiosity. Because it's easy for you and me to walk around and pretend to be a know-it-all or a know-them-all. To walk in a room and go, I know what it's like to be you. 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 And make assumptions about people when we don't know their very complicated past or complicated present. We can all make judgments about people just based off of the smallest of things. When I go play basketball, you know, they, we kind of do the captain's thing at my open gym. I'm a captain. You're a captain. Okay. Well, one day I was in there and I instantly, I'm going to just be honest with you. I'm going to be very vulnerable. I instantly started looking for all the six, seven black people to be on my team. I was like, I got you. I got you. I got you. I saw a short white dude. I said, what's up, man? Uh, I got you. <laughs> and it wasn't that he was white. That wasn't why. Let me tell you why I didn't want him on my team. It's because of his shoes. Let me show you what my man was wearing real fast. <laughs> And he had on cargo shorts. I said, bro, are we going on a hike? You got a granola bar in there? What are we doing? I didn't racially profile them. I, I, I shoe profiled the brother. I said, you ain't here to play basketball. We're not rock climbing, bro. We're trying to play basketball. I'm not here to be your pastor. I'm not here to decide. Hey, Pastor Ryan. No, 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 no. We're not Pastor Ryan today. No. He was really good at basketball. It's very good. We won about five games together. And guess what? I was wrong. I was wrong. Has anybody ever gotten it wrong about you? So what, what leaders have to do is they, they have to walk in rooms. And instead of assuming that they know everybody in there, they have to begin to ask the question, what's it like to be you? What, what's, what's it like to be you? Instead of assuming I... I I ask other black people, hey, what, what's it like to be you in this organization? We don't have the same black store. Hey, wait, hey, hey what, 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 what's it like to, to be hired here? What's it like to be on the other side of being led by me? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What's it like to be on the other side of you? Some people think, well, what's it like to be on the other side of me? It's awesome! <laughs> to which I would ask you, are you sure? <laughs> A few years ago, my wife began to dream about a children's book that would teach children to value other people that don't look like them. And she began dreaming about what it would look like if the next generation, who will soon take our place as leaders, were more united than we are currently. And a few years later, that dream's become a reality. And her book actually launches right here at Orange Conference. <laughs> It's called Jackson and the Not So Colorful Day. You should go out and buy 100 each. No biggie. If it's 50 is all you can do, I get it. Church budgets, I get it. That's cool. But what it does is it teaches kids to go, wait a minute. Somebody else across from me that maybe doesn't look like me isn't somebody that I should shun or be confused by. There's somebody I should be curious about. 
And guess what the next generation desperately needs us to do? They need to see us ask this question to other complicated humans. They need to see us be able to walk up to someone that maybe we don't fully understand and just go, instead of assuming that I know what it's like to be you, I understand that you got some complications and I do, I do too. I think that's the kind of leaders we all need to be because those are the kind of leaders that we love to follow the most. Jesus, I thank you so much for looking at our complications and making a decision to die for them. Thank you for dying on a cross for the things that sometimes we don't want to forgive in others. So may we take what you've done for us and give that same gift to other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it.